thin time. making a new video for that board. Just getting rid of any little sharp bits. There we go, that looks good. Yeah, so using plastic, help your hands. Now I'll just go around here. Just a light rub. Because if you get a little fragment sitting up, it'll be like a razor blade. So just a light rub. sitting up on a board like this will cut you like a razor blade. A little bit there. There we go, I'll just get rid of that, sorry. Tiny little fragment here. I'll just cut that off here. There we go. See that? Sometimes you have little bits of the lap. Get rid of that. Perfect. Now let's get this spin set. Measure where this one went compared to the other one. It was eight and a half. Now, there we go. Pretty sure. Okay, eight and a half was there, but I moved it up a little bit further than that. Pretty darn good. That looks good. Now, I'll just set this straight. As I say, the fin is quite. Hey! Get this set right. Now. Sorry, I'm just getting this just right. And this is a pretty big ass fin, as I said, 12 inches deep. Just making sure. Oh, look at that. Look at the V. Amazing. Now, what I'm going to do here, mix up a little bit of lamb, and I'm going to tack the fin on, as we do. And 
then I'll blast the fin on. And need a little bit of resin to do this. The drum's nearly finished. I think Mick's going to be pretty pumped with this one. Right, uh, while this is going off, I'll just mix up the I'm loving the look of this. This is looking beautiful. If you've seen many of these boards, and that's dropping down just about there, looking nice. If you've seen many of these boards before, they're very full on with the fin. Alright, I'm just lining that up straight. Yeah, so it's very extreme, this board. But this, I'm going to make a new video for the, that board. And I'll use Mix 1 because this one looks quite nice, the full-on version. I'm not really interested in the toned-down one now. I think the... the Full on version is the way to go. Um, there we go. Now, the reason you put resin on in the old days with your glue, back in the tri fin days, of you know, pumping out shitloads of boards. I'm just looking down there, make sure I've got it in the center of that stringer. Yep, that looks pretty darn good. Looking both sides. squeegees up. And I'll cut the cloth. Because what I'll do next is I will put the ravens on and so forth. Just about out of ravens, so which isn't a bad thing, I'll just cut some more ravings. I'll make some out of a bit of six ounce. Should have enough for most of this board. Right, so you want it twice the width of the base, that, plus that, plus a cup to tie. So that's enough for one, two. I might have enough on this, I should have. Four. Four. Five, six, oops, seven, eight, nine, and oh no, I'm going to have enough. There we go. Always good when you have enough. Get rid of that little knot there. There we go. Yeah, just had enough. 14. That's what we used to put on the boards in the 80s on a tri fin. 14 rovers each side. Yeah, we'll tie that up. It's not bad. Sorry, I'm just. Mick just sent me a message. One second. I'm just going to flick off for a sec. Um, awesome, Mick is watching the board get done, and that's part of the part of the experience we're trying to give. You know, like a, there's all different um, 
ways of sort of doing stuff and the way we're sort of going halfway going down is we just make the board the person that sees the board get made no nothing to hide there we go so there's the ravens all by bag all by cardboard now now we cut the cloth out now I'm just using a bit of six ounce. I'll start off by using my scrap. There we go. Use my scrap pieces first. We don't waste too much. Okay, a lot of it. Now I put three layers on the side of this fin. So that's the the last layer that goes on. Not the first, you put the biggest pieces on first. And this one. There we go. Cut that. Cut the shape a bit. doesn't have to go way up the fin. That does not add strength. I don't know, you want about an inch and a bit in front of the fin. Now I want a piece in between. That one's too small. So I'll just cut another little piece. And the third one, you want it to be like staggered in size. There we go. So this one will go in between. They have three different sizes. Yeah, this one goes in between that one and this one. Right. As soon as that gels, which won't be far away, yeah, it's gelled now, and I'll start glassing this fin on. This is going to be pretty darn good. Okay, that's gone off. I'll throw that out here so I don't stink the room out. So I'll take this off. I'll just check that it's nice and straight. Good old cheap plant. That looks beautiful. That looks really good. Yeah. Doesn't need a lot of resin. Now the little trick we do, you just put a dash of acetone in, not heaps, that'll evaporate, but it'll be thin enough to make the um, resin thin a bit while you absorb the rovings and then it'll evaporate. Just a little trick we do. So what I do is I stir that in quick. Then, you drop the ravens in. When I used to do four boards at once, tri-fins, we used to do 12 fins at once. So I'd have two two metre lengths of ravens I'd put in a, in a drum. So you just put that in there like that. Okay. Pull it like that, get a bit of the air out. And you just let it sit for a moment. Okay. Get my brush. I'm just gonna wet the fin out. Okay. Wet the fin out. I know you get a bit messy of this part, it goes all over the board, but that's alright. Most of the time it's where it's going to drip anyway, it doesn't matter. Okay, this side. Now this is a bowl and fin, so I haven't done it in silane. So it's got a slight cloudiness to it, not much, it's quite good. There we go. So you paint the base. Here we go, look at that. Now, comes the next part, 
strain my rovings. Now get my rovings out, it's been soaking for a long time. Pull the resin out, like that. Pretty simple, and that's it. You see people going overboard of how many times they pull the rovings through. About four is enough. Okay, there's nothing hard about this. This is the way all glasses did it in the 80s, or even 70s, I suppose. You grab the end of the scissors, sit it where you want it, and you cut it. Okay, there's nothing mystical about this. It's just simple logic. Uh, I've seen some videos where people are dancing around and making a bit of a thing of it, but it really isn't that basic. It's like mopping a floor. Sometimes just a bit of logic and you put the big piece on. Now the reason you put the big piece on first, if you put the small pieces on first, wherever the small pieces end, you will sand through and you don't want to do that. Now all I'm doing here is just getting all the air out of the the um, rovens, put that on there, same thing again, pushing it back, working the rovens through, see here, tips, that's before I've even put the excess resin on, I'm just getting the rovens set, because if they go off on you, but you've got this done, you're right, this could go off on me now, and it wouldn't matter, I'd still be able to finish it off by putting the more resin on, and, because that's good, that hasn't fucked up okay now you just get your brush paint these bits we need a bit of extra resin there we go bit of extra resin front and back there we go then you just go over it with your hands both sides make sure it's all good make sure the front is filled make sure the back is filled here Go up the fin. There, now that, as I said, that can gel now and the board will not be wrecked. Okay, then you put the next size one on, which was that one. Then I put the smaller one on. Not a heap smaller, a little bit smaller. There you go. That's where the strength comes from, not the rovings, okay? You've got to have a few rovings on there, but having the three layers of cloth and not sanding into it, that's where your strength comes from. Right, I so you put that there like that. Get rid of any excess. Now, I just paint a bit of extra resin on this where it needs it. it doesn't need heaps, but just a little bit on top where it's dry. There we go. Now, use our hand up and down the board, We're getting any bubbles out. Go backwards, clean the bubbles out, any excess bits of resin, go forward, same thing, get the bubbles out, make sure that's flat, there we go, up the board, it's pretty good, that's wet out alright, take any excess off, now, that's pretty well it, and what you do now, clean your hands and then you just use your squeegee, and all I'm going to do is get the exit. I used to have a little squeegee I'd use for this. So a squeegee, just to get that flat. The excess can sit there. It works as a bit of a help when you're sanding. Get any bits of strands of cloth off like that. There we go. Get rid of that. Flatten it all out so it's nice and neat. The idea is you want these bits of cloth here to be dead flat against the board. You don't want them to be floating. So when you sand it, you're not sanding it away. There we go backwards. See that? That way it's going to be maximum strength. Pull off the little strandy bits. Looks pretty darn good. And now I'll just clean it up a bit and hopefully it should gel. Now the biggest problem you have is bubbles in your rovings. I've gotten rid of that right from the start. I'm making sure I've got none. Through the middle. Now I'm going through the tail. I don't want any bubbles in here. So you just work that out. Work that out in the tail. See how it's no bubbles. Beautiful. Now go forward. Same thing. So this is starting to gel already. It's starting to warm up. No bubbles here. There we 
go, it's going off. So open up the front here. This is the part you've only got a small amount of time to do it. See how it's about to start to thicken. I'll put that in there. That's fine, I've got a couple of minutes. Get these little strandy bits off. That's nice and flat. The needier you do this, the better. Okay, so that's sitting flat against the board. Here we go, that's gelling now. See that? So let's get an extra bit, drop it in here. And this fills up the front here. So when you sand it, you've got plenty of room and you don't over sand it into the cloth. Gotta get rid of that. Get rid of that. That's nice and neat. Come on. It's about to gel a bit more. I just want a bit more hardness in that gel. It all happens within a few minutes. There we go. See that? See how it's just starting to thicken? There we go. Now I'll put that bit in here. Now that's about to go hard. That's when you close up the top. See here? Close up the top. And I need a few mils so when I'm sanding, I've got just perfect resin there. No air. All through there. Okay, that gets cut away and sanded. Now the back here. I'm going to do the same here. This is gelling. Just going to feed a little bit up the back here. Make sure there's no air bubbles going up here. Because you don't want to sand it right to the fin. You want to sand it a couple of mil away from this. And this is what I'm doing here. This, these ravens are gone hard. Okay? So they're gone off completely. Both sides. Perfect. That's good. That's good. As you can see, that's gelled. That can go in there. Right, so that was the quick part. Clean my scissors. This pair is just for um, just for fins. Now the scissors I used, I got asked the other day about scissors, and these are the ones I use, the 12 inch Mundials. Okay, um, they're they're bloody good. Okay, you take care of them, you have a few different pairs. First thing you do is you put it in acetone and get rid of all the paint on the handle. Because that can bite you in the ass later on. It can come off while you're working. So get rid of that so you have perfectly clean scissors. That's the first job. If it's black paint or red paint, like here, soak it in the acetone and they come up clean like this. Okay, so there we are. Sierra, Sierra Sharp Mundals. Beautiful scissors. When, when we used to make clothing years ago, they're the ones we used as well. Now, this is going off. I'm going to let this sit for a little while. And then I'm going to come back and trim it. Here we go. Nice and smooth. And as I'm sanding, when I sand this, I'll hardly cut into these. So I'm going to have maximum strength. And you can see the ravings. I've got a reasonable curve on the ravings. About a 20 cent piece. Curve and um, yeah, that's it. Not bad. Now, the filler coat goes on this next, but I won't do that for a little while. I'll let the fins cool down because if you put the filler coat on while the fins are hot, the filler coat come, goes off a bit quicker and it goes waxy, it goes sticky. So, if you let it cool down completely, I'll trim these in about 20 minutes. If you let it cool down completely, when you do the filler coat, when you come to sand it and hand sand this, it won't be tacky. Okay, so that's why I do that. And I'll show Mick the close-up of that, depending which one he's watching. Look at that. There we go. Looking nice. So you can see I've got plenty of resin there and ravings to sand through there. Go past the edge of the fin and down a bit, so you don't want to sand to the fin. That fin looks beautiful, doesn't it? really looks nice if you drop it down it's basically about two inches the tip from the back of the board it, it is more appearance it's not something you measure to like a millimeter that's where you put the fin so if you drop it a line straight down as you can see there drop a line down it's to the end of the roving basically or lap so that's where you put the, the fin but that's a big ass fin it looks good but doesn't it it's nice 
So, yeah, there's that nice V. Yeah, looking good. Okay, I'll come back and fillicate this in about an hour. See you.